welcome to Rude Rhetoric. I will go into this, give my thoughts, comments, and criticism. It's kinda weird how I can repeat this event over and over again. Incidentally, I really like the artwork. Somewhat of an awkward sentence. He is the one whose fate we have written to fulfill your wishes. Could have written that a little bit better in my opinion, but I don't know. There's a script that gets rid of those boxes and descriptions. You might want to look for it because those things are very ugly and they will get in the way. Small bug, if I go over here and I summon a demon, it moves in my direction. And because it's not direction fixed, it switches sprites. It also It's also passing through that box right over there in an awkward way. The best way to fix that is to make the demon above the player because we're not going to be touching it as, as, as a box. We're not going to be getting anywhere near it. We're going to kill it by the time by the time we touch that square. So if you put it as above the player, it will go above that tile set and it won't go below it. It'll look awkward. Another small test just to see if the direction fix bugs out if I look at it this way. Yep. It's kind of funny how the first battle in this game is us fighting this really badass demon with our fists. We're just like punching this guy out, guys. So apparently Damsel is a real badass, because look at that shit. <laughs> if we're going to be punching out demons for the rest of this game, I might like it a lot. <laughs> but, uh, we'll see. Though I, I, I kind of wonder, maybe you should tone down the battler a little bit, because, uh, I don't know, it, it feels kind of weird how my character just, some random villager, does that to some really badass sprite. I mean, unless you have some really, really amazingly godlike battlers that you have planned later on, you might want to maybe tone that down to an imp of some sort, I don't know. I would get rid of one of those imes just to make it flow a little bit better. The side doesn't really need to be capitalized. My original sprite is, be is below the bed. You see that red hair that just disappeared? The best way to get rid of that is lower my player's visibility by from 255 to 0 and then put it back to 255 when I'm out of bed. If I'm going to land on this door right here, at least have the door open. Otherwise, spot me where I'm standing right now because it's weird that I get teleported in the door when it's still closed. Also, if you teleport me inside a building, don't teleport me on the teleport. Teleport me right here because that allows me to move out really quickly instead of having to do it like this. Have to move up and then back down. That's kind of awkward for me. It's usually not a good idea to give me all of these items at once. Usually what you want to do is if you give me a monster that afflicts my party with elements, that is the time to start giving me items that cure stuff like this. When you just throw all these items in my lap, I won't buy them at all. So that when they do become useful, it's kind of confusing. Like, I I, I don't know, I, you're not really guiding me to which items I should buy at the moment. Just say the next dungeon has monsters that cast poison. That then it's okay for me to have be able to buy antidotes or eye drops or whatnot. Don't just throw all these items, like I said. But so far, the game is pretty competent. I uh, I enjoyed I enjoy the mapping. I like this entire place, giving me all these tutorials and whatnot. Very nice design. This is some fancy mapping going on here. This place really does feel like a city, so good job on that. It is kind of awkward how I can go inside the door like that, but whatever, it's not a huge problem. I mean, maybe there is a way to fix that? I know there's an auto door function that allows you to create doors automatically with RPG Maker VX is Maybe that fixes it? Because I don't remember seeing this in other games. I also like how the artwork you created blends pretty well with the RTP, so good job with that. How the hell did she leave? I never saw her sprite go out the door like right here. It's kind of weird. I would put an event where I'm standing right now below the player, so this guy right here doesn't stand right here and get in the way because if because sometimes he'll just move right here and it'll take him several seconds to move out of my way which is kind of irritating there is a script called unifies region lock which allows you to place region places and allows you to region lock certain npcs and players so that character can't walk on a certain tile you could probably look into that too if you don't want to make an event right here creative map design is creative it is a little odd how these sprites are so much bigger than mine but whatever not a huge issue, of course. Why did the music go from normal battle music to boss battle music? The best way to fix that is there's a command that allows you to switch the music permanently. 
So what you do is you switch the music permanently from normal to boss, and then after the boss battle is done, switch it back from boss to normal. That way you don't have to switch the music in battle and make it sound awkward. The last dialogue box, he was like, you Denzel. Maybe you should say you are Denzel or you're Denzel? I don't know. The gradients on this guy is really nice. Good job. The last dialogue box probably had a text cut off. I didn't see it completely, but you might want to check it. I know someone already pointed this out, but yeah, his hair is a little awkward. That being said, the rest of his sprite is pretty awesome. I love that little back end of his shirt. That little golden trimming. That's nice. Another one of those boxes. Like I said, once you download a certain script for that, I don't know what the name of the script is, but I know there is one. All of those boxes will go away automatically. The random battle encounter rate might be a little bit too high. Consider lowering a little bit. Why is there no event that uh, makes the transition between the water and the waterfall a little bit better? There is one. It looks a lot like the one right here. You should use it. There was another one where, where you forgot to add an event like this. But because it was dark, it made sense, and I didn't talk about it. That was okay. This is too obvious. It looks a little bit weird. If you add, an, if you add a waterfall event, it would look a lot better. Watch the transition, the tint of the screen. You see how it's changed before I got outside? What you want to do is teleport me, fade out. No. Fade out, teleport me, change the tone, fade back in. So it's a little bit more elegant. It's kind of odd how I found a doctor in the library of all places. Did you tell me that a doctor would be here? I don't think you did, but I might be wrong. Because there are just so many NPCs to talk to, dude. Really? Does the doctor have to be level 99? That's kind of over the top. Also, one HP and one MP. <laughs> I mean, I know she's a guest character, but that's kind of odd. The last dialogue box from this one had another text cut off. Another text cut off. I shouldn't be able to walk on the door. If it's gonna tell me that, I should go right here, and then the game tells me I shouldn't leave, and that it should tell put me back here. Text cut off. Text cut off. It's kind of weird how I apparently killed him by tearing off his clothes, which is kind of funny, but never mind. Uh, basically, the death state. You might want to rename it to near death or incapacitate, because when you tell me it's death, it gives me a lot of weird ideas like, okay, so I just killed this guy? What happens if I get into a fight where I'm training with somebody and I ax and I apparently kill him, the guy I'm training with, because I afflicted him with a death state, quote unquote? Yeah, it's an awkward it's an awkward name for that type of status, in my opinion. Fox. It's kind of odd how he just teleports behind me when he joins my party. You could probably fix that by fading out and fading back in after he joins. Though that is kind of optional, it didn't look terrible if you would say that I guess. Do I really gotta go through this dungeon again with all the random battles? I'm gonna keep this all on camera just to give you an idea of how annoying this is. The battles take about 30 seconds if I wanted to fight each one of them. Oh, there we go. If you're gonna throw a boss battle at me, you might want to warn me with an event saying I might want to save or something, or add save points, even though it might be redundant, it'll tell the player, oh, maybe I should save right now because of a random battle of some sort. Because just giving me a, a boss battle is kind of weird. Especially if it's hard, I'm not prepared. The boss music changed from normal boss, normal theme to boss theme awkwardly again. Like I said, it's, a, it's an easy fix once you figure out the command for it. It's somewhere. I forget exactly where it is, but I know it exists. Nice effect on that last scene. The demo 0 0.01. Okay. Never got to say the witches. They're interesting. Yeah, is it just gonna leave me here? Yep. Alright, well. Let's go back to the thing. Okay, short and sweet. Actually, let me just go somewhere the music is loud. Alright, so what do I think about the game? First first RPG Maker game the creator has uh, created apparently, or is working on? Very nice. The mapping is great. With RTP, this is some really good RTP mapping. I like the character art. You did a really good job designing them and they go really well with the RTP graphics. And the storyline, it's pretty generic, but that's okay because you're, I don't really see the game be, wanting to be too ambitious. So that's okay. First RPG Maker game, you want to make a nice, simple 
RPG Maker game with a, a good storyline, good characters. You don't want to be too ambitious, otherwise that will kill it. I can understand that completely. So it's doing really well. I'm interested to see where Nero goes on. He the, the first protagonist, like I said, is very generic. He starts off as a kid being woken up by his parents to go do chores and whatnot, who wants to be a knight. I mean, we've heard that in a million RPGs, but Nero, he's interesting. Because not only is he like this good guy, which I thought he was going to be a little bit more of a dickhead based on his character and how I was I was assuming he was going to be a, a bit of a contrast between the other main character, but not exactly. He's, he seems like a pretty good guy. That's why I was a little bit disappointed that the, game, that the game ended right now, because I am really curious what you're going to do with these witches, who are apparently masters of magic that is apparently evil of some sort. So that's gonna be interesting. I'm gonna. I'll, I really want to see how his party, Nero's party, will will evolve into this pseudo anti-hero type of thing or anti-villain type of thing, or if he's if he's gonna be fighting the art, the main protagonist anytime soon. I like that. I like that concept. There's a a good amount of there's a good amount of uh, pa passion. No, there's a lot a lot to look forward to. After playing this demo, it was short and sweet, and I like that. I hate really long demos, but yeah, I, I enjoyed this. I'll definitely keep an eye on it. Gameplay, though, uh, like I said, the random battles were pretty bad. Okay, they were pretty bad, but I have pretty high standards when it comes to RPG Maker Ace battles. I like them really fast, and the animations were just slow, in my opinion. There wasn't a whole lot to do, except for that first dungeon. There was a few things to do. I wish there was like a boss battle of some sort with Nero's party, because I had a few interesting skills, but whatever. I just didn't like having to go through that dungeon, escaping every fight, because none of the fights were that interesting. I fight a few of them, and then I'm like, alright, that's it, I don't need to fight anymore. But the game keeps throwing random battle after random battle after random battle. So, without overcomplicating the battles, I would either get rid of the random battles completely or lower the encounter rate a lot. Because I don't really need to fight so many random battles. The game isn't that difficult at the moment, so I don't have to worry about it. I was going to complain about how there wasn't a whole lot of skills, but you definitely proved me wrong in the first dungeon. There, there were a good amount of skills, and it complemented the, the current design. Also, I like how... I like how the game is set up. The game tells me to go a certain way, the game gives me items, and the game gives me money, and what before it gives me and after it gives me money it gives me certain shops. Basically it it how the game is designed is very competent because if you it's just really nice. I, I, I can't really explain it very well, honestly. Alright, I need to get my head out of my ass and so I can talk a little bit better. Anyways, like I said I enjoy how you how you uh, designed the game and how your how the plot flows basically you and how every time you're giving me items it complements the current design the only thing I didn't really like was the fact that you gave me all of those status element cures I would just go with antidotes and then the next dungeon throws a few enemies that poison me because you already gave me one enemy that poisoned that's cool so it would be nice if you gave me more of those items instead of throwing all of these items that cure all of these elements that was a bit of a waste and the dialogue was pretty good it was well written I, I, I wasn't really looking for typos compared to a lot of my other videos. I'm, I'm trying to calm down on that a little bit, mostly to hurry this up a little bit, hurry up my Let's Plays and get more done. So that's okay. Even though I wasn't looking for a whole lot of them, I, I didn't find any real big errors at all, and it flowed very well. I, I enjoyed what I read so far. Anyway, like I said, this is a promising demo, and I hope to see more from you. I would like... Maybe it would be a good idea for you to try this like comic like cutscene like at the beginning of the intro It was very generic. I was basically a chosen one. That's what I got from it So to make it a little bit more unique I would I would draw it out You would draw out the main character running up in the hallway and seeing these three guardians and it would all be kind of like a comic Sort of thing going on just to give it a little bit more flavor and make it stand out 
because it was just kind of weird. Like, my first impressions were, is this just gonna be a random, very generic, very cliche RPG? Because that's what I thought until I got to Nero's chapter, which is what I was looking forward to. So you might want to be careful about that. Anyway, goodbye, good luck, I will subscribe to this game.